Not a person, not a planet, but a rogue giant drifting through space, magnetic and alone, meet the real simp. In the large expanse of nothingness between the stars, far from the comforting pull of any sun, there in the midst of nothingness drifts an object that shouldn't be, an object not registered with the solar system, disobeying the gravitational choreography of planetary movement around stars, out there alone, silent, cold, and mysterious. Its name strikingly resembles a literal simp, is in fact simp J013656.5 plus 093347.3. The meme-phased internet has a thing or two to say about its name. Astronomers consider it to be an important scientific discovery, doing its thing, breaking the rules and reminding us that a vastness of nothingness can yield something. 2016 was the year SIMP was discovered using both 2 Micron All Sky Survey and Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer. This object is located some 20 light years away from Earth, not too far away in cosmetology language. Shout across the void, and maybe, just maybe, you'd hear an echo in a few decades. Laughs aside, SIMP is anything but a SIMP. It's sitting pretty on the thin line of being referred to as a brown dwarf, or oftentimes a planetary mass object. This thing is hefty, clocking in at 13 times the mass of Jupiter, our solar system's heavyweight champ, but is still only about the same size. That object's mass puts it right on the edge, too big for most planets, yet small enough to miss the star cutoff. There exists a threshold set by astronomers for planetary objects, and SIMP attains the lower mass limit, hence often referred to as a brown dwarf. In a stark contrast to the word dwarf, SIMP is pretty enormous, 13 times the mass of Jupiter. Pretty big, I must say. Now why call that a dwarf? Simple, too small to sustain hydrogen fusion, yet too big to be considered a proper planet, somewhat of a big-for-nothing object, very similar to a failed star. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star doesn't fall kindly for SIMP as it wanders the galaxy without a solar system to call home. That's in fact what makes SIMP fascinating and interests astronomers to this very day. Using Carl G. Jansky's Very Large Array Radio Telescope in 2018, SIMP was emitting an aura, an unlikely characteristic of a SIMP. Auroras, not auras though. If you aren't aware of what auroras are, here it is. Auroras are also known as the Northern Lights, Aurora Borealis, or Southern Lights, Aurora Australis. Colorful, dynamic, and often visually delicate displays of an intricate dance of particles and magnetism between the Sun and Earth called space weather. SIMP was emitting strong radio signals, which is very unusual as that feature is associated with planets undergoing magnetic auroras. SIMP technically shouldn't be emitting auroras as it had neither a nearby star nor a known magnetic field unlike the northern lights on Earth. Interaction between a planet's magnetic field and a star's solar wind. Its magnetic field is more than 200 times stronger than Jupiter's. The temperature on its surface is more than 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. Here we are with SIMP, with a magnetic field that's 200 times stronger than Jupiter's, which was already the largest known magnetic field in our solar system. This discovery was a game changer. Until then, auroras were mostly observed on planets orbiting stars. The mechanism was simple. Charged particles from the star's wind slam into the planet's magnetic field, funneled towards the poles, and like clockwork, auroras are formed. That looked pretty straightforward, right? Well, in SIMP's auroras, it is generated without any star at all. Cool, but not cool for the astronomers that have to figure out definitively the mechanism behind SIMP's auroras formation. Although it's been suggested to be a mechanism that's more internal, perhaps involving interactions between its magnetic field and the ionized material in its own atmosphere, or maybe it once had a moon with which it magnetically interacted, like Jupiter. Now we have a dilemma on our hands that requires solving. How does an object like SIMP even form? 
The internet has gone wild with various hypotheses, but two stand out. Not that they're verified, but they strike us as the most logical. The first being that Simp was born as a brown dwarf, forming directly from a collapsing gas cloud just like stars do, but never gaining enough mass to ignite full fusion. The second is a bit more dramatic, considering that Simp was once a planet in a normal solar system that unfortunately fell out of the solar system. Maybe a passing star disrupted its system. Maybe gravitational interactions with other massive bodies ejected it. One moment it's orbiting the sun, the next it's flung into the vast nothingness of interstellar space, forever alone. These are all unverified hypotheses and a handful of maybes. Either way, Simp is an exile. Whether it was born an outcast or became one later, it now wanders the galaxy without a home. Now that's a satisfactory enough explanation as to Simp's formation. Mind you, Simp doesn't drift aimlessly. In fact, it rotates once every 2.4 hours. For something so massive, that's incredibly quick. For emphasis, Jupiter takes about 10 hours to complete one rotation. Simp does it in under a quarter of that. This rapid rotation might just be the reason it has a very strong and supercharged magnetic field. It's like combining a fast rotation with a conductive interior, likely composed of metallic hydrogen. You get a dynamo effect. Essentially, SIMP is a self-sustaining magnetic powerhouse. And unlike Earth, where our magnetic field protects us from solar radiation, SIMP's magnetic field is doing pretty well in whatever it's doing, and it's doing so with a flare. Now we cannot completely analyze a planetary object without talking about the atmosphere that surrounds the object. Thanks to observations in the infrared, we've been able to gather clues about what SIMP's upper layers are like. And like the rest of this object, the atmosphere is doing its own weird thing. The temperatures on SIMP reach heights of about 800 degrees Celsius. Hot, but not so hot that nothing interesting can happen. In fact, it's just the right range of clouds made of exotic materials to form. We're talking about clouds of molten iron and silicate dust, basically rock vapor. These clouds shift, form patterns, and likely evolve over time. The atmospheric dynamics resemble those of gas giants, but dissimilar in terms of behavior. Variations in brightness suggest that SIMP has weather systems, giant storms, and possibly jet streams whipping across its surface at extreme speeds. Here's a fascinating twist. These atmospheric variations could be responsible for some of the radio emissions we observe. Voila! If charged particles in SIMP's upper atmosphere are interacting with its magnetic field, they could generate bursts of radio waves in much the same way lightning does on Earth. In other words, SIMP might not just be glowing, it might be thundering. Now, with all this new knowledge, one would ask, how many simps are out there? My guess, hundreds of them. Dare I say, thousands. Surveys of star-forming regions suggest that rogue planets and brown dwarfs may be incredibly common. Some models even suggest that for every star in the galaxy, there could be several rogue planets wandering the void. That's billions, maybe even trillions of dark, silent worlds slipping through the vast nothingness between the stars, waiting to be discovered. SIMP has become a kind of ambassador for this hidden population, an object we direct it not by its visible light, it's too dim for that, but by its infrared glow and its radio emissions. This means that other rogue planets, equally magnetic and exotic, might be detectable using the same methods. Telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope are now sensitive enough to spot such objects in detail. Unfortunately, once we do, we might find that SIMP isn't unique. It might be the first of many, a scout of a whole new class of astronomical objects that challenge everything we thought we knew. Recall the name SIMP J01365.5 plus 093347.3. The SIMP part comes from a French acronym, Sondage Infrarouge de Mouvement Propre. The rest of it are its celestial coordinates, like a cosmic street address. Of course, the internet saw SIMP and ran wild. In slang, SIMP is used to describe someone who's overly submissive or desperate for attention, usually in a romantic context. 
which is ironic given that Simp, the object, is anything but needy. It doesn't orbit anyone. It doesn't seek attention. It's fiercely independent, unfathomably magnetic, and utterly alone. If anything, it's the anti-Simp. The name may be a joke, but the science is deadly serious. Simp J013656.5 plus 093347.3 matters because it forces us to rethink how we define planets, stars, and generally the solar system. For centuries, we've drawn lines between these categories. Planets orbit stars. Stars burn hydrogen. Brown dwarfs sit in the middle. Now the universe is telling us it doesn't care about our definitions. It just does what it does, and every so often, it throws something like simp at us. A riddle wrapped in a mystery wrapped in a magnetic field. What next? Where do we go from here? We keep looking. We keep building better telescopes, refining our models, and expanding our definitions. Simp shows us that there's still so much we don't understand. We used to think planets were rare. Then we realized stars often had planetary systems. Now we're starting to understand that some planets go rogue. Not just rogue, but active, complex, and powerful. If objects like Simp are common, then the architecture of the galaxy is even more diverse than we imagined. Simp is a mystery, yes. A promise, yes. A promise that we may not have all the answers. The universe still holds secrets. That the most interesting things may be the ones we overlooked. Science isn't about having all the answers. It's about being willing to ask better questions. Simp reminds us to look into the dark places between the vast nothingness. The vast nothingness we oftentimes ignore is where the real story is hiding. 